Just nine months ago, Bitcoin was the hottest commodity on the market, and it seemed like every investing guru out there was trying to make money by selling you a Bitcoin course. I mean, trying to help you out by getting you on the never-ending Bitcoin train. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Should I buy now? Right now, cryptocurrency is booming. It was pretty much free and easy money, right? And it seemed like every day there was a new story about a cryptocurrency millionaire. But then, this happened. The price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies fell by 60% within a three week span and haven't recovered since. So what happened here? And what happened to all the buzz around Bitcoin? Well, I have a few answers for you, but first I should probably give you some background information on what Bitcoin is and how we got to this point. In October 2008, a mysterious paper called Bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system began showing up in the email boxes of members of a website called metsdowd.com. At the time, this website was one of the very few places on the web that was dedicated to sharing the latest cryptocurrency news. The paper was published by a mysterious user called Satoshi Nakamoto. The paper went into detail about how Bitcoin could become a system for electronic transactions without relying on trust. And obviously, this created some buzz in the crypto world. In January of 2009, Nakamoto released version 0.1 of the Bitcoin software on SourceForge.net and mined the genesis block of Bitcoin. The first Bitcoin transaction occurred shortly after, on January 12th of 2009, when Hal Finney received 10 Bitcoins from Satoshi Nakamoto. Now to this day, we aren't quite sure who Nakamoto really is. We don't know if it's one person, or maybe it's a group of people, we just don't know. However, we do know that they obtained roughly 1 million Bitcoins near the very beginning of Bitcoin. That means that at the peak of Bitcoin in late 2017, early 2018, their net worth would be around $20 billion. Kind of amazing considering we have no idea who they are. In 2010, Bitcoin would hit a milestone when Lazlo Hanyets, a programmer from Florida, sent 10,000 Bitcoins to a volunteer in England who spent about $25 to order a pizza from Papa John's. That pizza today would be valued at around $60 million. Kind of an expensive pizza, if I may say so myself. By 2011, some rival cryptocurrencies started emerging to try and take some of the market share away from Bitcoin. However, Bitcoin still remained the 800 pound gorilla of crypto. By 2012, Bitcoin's popularity made its way into primetime television when The Good Wife talked about a fictionalized trial involving Bitcoin and Jim Cramer, of course. Shortly after the episode aired, WordPress, the website building platform, started accepting Bitcoins as payments. This was arguably the first large corporation that acknowledged Bitcoin as an actual currency. Over the next four years, Bitcoin kept getting more and more attention while it continued to add to its list of 100,000 merchants that accepted Bitcoin as payment. Some of the notable merchants that were added between 2013 and 2016 were Zynga, Tiger Direct, Steam, Overstock, Newegg, Dell, and Microsoft. A good example of how popular Bitcoin was getting could be shown in Google Scholar. The amount of Bitcoin articles on Google Scholar from 2009 was 83. The amount of articles in 2012 was 424, in 2016 there were 3,580 articles, and in 2017 there were almost 11,000 articles about Bitcoin. By the end of 2017, eight years after its creation, the value of Bitcoin shot up to almost $20,000 US. In fact, the price of Bitcoin shot up so fast that its return on investment for 2017 was nearly 2000%. To put that in perspective, a very good year in other investment fields like the stock market and real estate is about 10 to 15%. That's a really good year. One of the reasons was that 2017 was actually not a great year in terms of expanding Bitcoin's merchants and its actual application. However, 2017 was a great year for promising people you could make money from Bitcoin. You see, 2017 was the year when financial gurus and the media kept telling people to view Bitcoin as an investment rather than a currency. And as you guys know, when people are promised a fast and easy way to get rich, they tend to hop on board. You see, because it was viewed as an investment field, there was a flood of new investors all at the same time. This helped to drive the price of Bitcoin through the roof. Now, I'm not saying that gurus like Ty Lopez single-handedly drove up the price of Bitcoin. I'm not saying that. 
I am just using them as an example of people jumping on board of a hot trend telling you to invest because, well, it's a hot trend. And when enough media companies and financial institutions come out and say that Bitcoin is a good investment, obviously it will get more people to invest in the currency. But the problem with what I said in the last minute could be boiled down to just four words. Bitcoin is an investment. That is what was wrong with 2017. Bitcoin is not an investment. It is not a company, it is not a country, it is not something that produces any products or services. Therefore, it should not have been viewed as an investment. However, it should have always been viewed as a potential currency. That's it. I think Warren Buffett said it best earlier in 2018. He said, it's probably rat poison squared. When you're buying non-productive assets, all you're counting on is the next person is going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another next person coming along. And that brings us to why the Bitcoin bubble bursted. Nobel laureate Robert Schiller defines a bubble as a situation in which news of price increases spurs investor enthusiasm, which spreads by psychological contagion from person to person in the process, amplifying stories that might justify the price increases and bringing larger and larger class of investors who, despite doubts about the real value of an investment, are drawn to it partly by envy of other success and partly through a gambler's excitement. The most famous historic example of an investment bubble throughout history is probably tulip mania. You see, back in 17th century Europe, tulips were becoming a popular flower for merchants to sell for a good profit. And of course, when investors heard of these good profits, they wanted a piece of the action. So there was a flood of new investors looking for tulips that they could sell at a higher price to other investors. The promise of making money from investing in tulips became so popular that the price of tulips rose by nearly 2000% in the span of four months. Doesn't that sound familiar? This meant that the price of one tulip became more than the annual income for a skilled worker at the time. But once the price of tulips hit a breaking point, investors stopped believing that tulips could make money. So the demand for tulips decreased drastically within a span of one week and within a month, tulips lost almost all of their value. This made many merchants and investors who bought tulips for an insane price go bankrupt. Does this sound familiar to you at all? It's probably because bubbles like the dot-com bubble in 1999 and the housing bubble in 2008 followed a very similar pattern to the crypto bubble. So how do you tell if something is actually a bubble? Well, that's a little bit of a long explanation, but here's one of my golden rules for investing. If you don't understand what you are investing in or how it works or what it produces, then just don't invest in it. Also, if you are investing in something that doesn't produce anything, that is not called investing. The actual word for that is called speculating. That is a real term. And please, please, please take that to heart because so many people lost their life savings in crypto this year. And probably my least favorite thing out of all of this is remember those investing gurus? As it turns out, once they get you to buy their course and after the market collapses and you lose all your money, they mysteriously stop talking about crypto and move on to the next course that they can sell you on. So now let's circle back. What made the Bitcoin bubble burst? What led to Bitcoin Google searches decreasing by nearly 94% over the last nine months? Well, here's what happened. One of the first straws that broke the camel's back was a $534 million hack from CoinCheck, which was a Bitcoin wallet in Japan. It was the largest hack of Bitcoin ever. People lost all of their money, got tons of bad press, and the price of Bitcoin dropped. The second thing was that South Korea and some other countries decided to regulate and even ban Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies within their country. The third thing was that social media platforms temporarily banned cryptocurrency ads. So that means that there was less coverage, it was less in your face, and there were less investing gurus trying to sell you on a Bitcoin course. Now just an update to that, cryptocurrency ads are actually, as of a few months ago, are allowed again, but they are heavily restricted in what they can actually advertise. And lastly, the fourth thing is that people lost faith in cryptocurrencies. This is probably the biggest reason. There was less media coverage, less advertisements, less access to Bitcoin, and the big thing was less returns from Bitcoin investors. This led to less demand for Bitcoin, which led to less media coverage, which led to less demand, and so on and so forth. And that is what happened to Bitcoin. You see, Bitcoin might still increase in price, and it might actually be a decent currency in the future. 
But for now, I will leave this question to you. What do you think will happen to Bitcoin in the future? And do you agree or disagree with anything I said in this video? Just leave a comment down below. I'm curious to see what you think. Lastly, I'd like you guys to check out my own e-commerce marketplace called Joysk.com. Now on there, we actually sell physical items. So we sell books and video games and, and a bunch of other stuff. So I'd like you guys to please check it out. We have uh, pretty much the lowest prices on the internet for, for like 40% of our items. We have the lowest on the internet. So uh, and free shipping in Canada, free one to two day shipping in Canada. We're trying to beat Amazon uh, with faster shipping. By the way, lastly, sorry, I'm just random tangent here was that uh, do you guys notice that Amazon's been slipping up in their shipping? I've noticed that recently. So uh, we have not we have hit all of our shipping dates. Uh, in Canada, it's one to two days. Um, and in the United States, we max out at I think that the the longest shipping time we've had is four days, I believe to the United States. So, uh, you know, we're doing pretty good. And I'd like to thank you guys very much for watching and for supporting this and for supporting Joyce.com. It, it means so much to me. We've had, we have some big updates for that site coming in the uh, in the next few weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I also have a very, very special announcement video slash innovative video series that you guys guys have uh, probably never seen on YouTube before. So I'm very excited for that and uh, hopefully it will uh, all go well. So stay tuned for that cool video next week. Anyways, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Remember hit the subscribe and like button down below. You're all very beautiful people. I'll see you guys in the next video.